You know, Southern schools tend to get out earlier than Northern schools. Today was my daughter's last day in school. So I have three kids. My son graduated uh, kindergarten last week and my 12 and my, my 12 and nine year old had their last day today. Today's supposed to be the beginning of their summer break, the summer recess. Well, summer, just like the, the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas is supposed to be a time in an uptick of spending and temporary hiring. What we're seeing now because of the gas prices and inflation is a summer of misery. Demand is softening. Stagflation is here. And there doesn't seem to be anything that could stop the coming recession. And don't take my word for it. Barack Obama's own economic advisor, Larry Summers, is saying the exact same thing. My best guess is that a recession is ahead. I base that on the fact that we haven't had a situation like the present with inflation above four and unemployment below four without a recession following within a year or two. My first guest is a recovering investment banker and author of the book, The War on Small Business, Carol Roth. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you very much. And I appreciate you acknowledging my 12-step program for <laughs> investment banking. Isn't this about the time when millions of Americans are supposed to be literally gassing up the car and doing fun things, right? The end of school is here. You know, this is when mom and dad usually hit the road, the beach, the lake, the amusement park, the cabin, whatever it is. We go out in these communities that, you know, wait all year for the spending. They're not going to see it, which means they're also not going to hire as many people as they normally would. When demand like this is softening, and it's softening very quickly, what is there to stop a recession? Well, you have to remember that there is an intentional force that is trying to soften demand. The Federal Reserve, that in large part, along with stupid government policy, created this insane historic inflation that we are seeing, they're now saying, oh, we have to, we, we set your house on fire. Now the arsonists are gonna come along and try and figure out how we're going to rebuild it. And the challenge is that their tools are meant to slow demand. They're going to run off their balance sheet that they've gotten up to $9 trillion. They're going to raise interest rates. We already saw that 75 point basis or basis point hike um, last week. That is meant to cool demand. That is code for to get you to stop spending so that inflation doesn't increase in this you know, supply constrained environment. And that's the part of the strategy I don't understand. This, the consumer is set 70% of the economy, you need the consumer to avoid the recession. At the same time, you have an active set of policies meant to cool demand. Those two things are completely mathematically at odds with each other. Well, you heard him talk about the employment rate. What happens to summer hiring if demand starts cooling, if people aren't putting gas in their cars, if they aren't going out on the road, if they aren't going to stop over and eat somewhere or stay over somewhere or shop in the shop somewhere? What happens to all those jobs that are normally created, even the temporary ones for young people in the summer months? Yeah, I mean, this is where we have a bifurcation of the economy and where this is really hitting small businesses in a different way than big businesses, because big businesses can, you know, re-rationalize their employment. They can maybe close a location and send you to a different location. If you are a mom and pop, you may only have one location. And, and if it doesn't work out now for you, that you may go an entire season without getting more revenue. And that means you're probably closing your business. You know, and you, you've been through this, you know, horrible situation where you've been targeted to begin with. So there's really the haves and have nots. And you know, given the weird employment supply demand imbalance we have, we have almost two job openings for every job seeker that's out there. The only way to sort of you know mush and, and compact that demand again is to see these businesses close closing and not hiring. And we know what that ends up looking like is the R word. Now the only thing I have to say, Andrew, is that you know, the NBER is the one that declares a recession. They declare it after the fact. 
and obviously we have midterms coming up. Um, they have broad latitude. I mean, you, if you're a, a long-term investor, you have sort of a very specific, oh, here's what a recession is, is two quarters of contracting GDP. But they have the ability to go, well, you know, given these, these you know, tra chain, uh, turbulent times and the difference in the labor market and the fact that we'd have this unemployment rate, we're not actually going to call it a recession. So I think that's a realistic possibility that we could be in one that we all agree is a recession, but they actually decide to call it something else. Well, the, the Democrats and the media keep acting like we have some kind of perception problem that Biden's on top of this. We just it, it's, a, it's a question of our own inability to see what a great job they're doing. And I think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, that the, the oil industry is kind of a, a, an analogy here. You, you have a federal government that cut off pipelines that reversed uh, you know, the, the previous administration's policies, rescinded leases. And by the way, we've only built one new refinery in 45 years. This is what they wanted. This is what they told us we had to do. And now that it's not working, they're sort of ordering the industry to do something about it for them. Well, it doesn't work that way. You can't you can't issue policies from on high and when they don't work, say, well, now everybody else has a responsibility to make up for our failures. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to say that the official handshake of the Biden administration is pointing the finger at someone else because that is all that he's doing. I mean, all of these things could be changed if he would do a 180 on policy. That is completely within his purview. The insane gas policy that he has put forth since day one, and he campaigned on this. You know, we have video that says- I'm And we played it. Down. Yeah, <laughs> we played we, it here. All right, we, we're, we're shutting this down. We're, we're, we're shutting down the drilling. We're shutting down the pipelines, which they did. That's that's something they actually got done. Um, and now they want to go back and say, you know, oil companies, you have to, to go and turn on the spigots as if that's something that you can even do. They're not going to make billion dollar capital investments if they can even do that because ESG has kind of directed capital away from them. But they're not going to make those level of investments if you're trying to put them out of business. You need to give them comfort that, okay, we're going to pursue a rational fossil fuel policy alongside you know, trying to do our green dream over here. But they are so decoupled with reality that they go, no, no, you, you, know, you need to go and do this. And it's just not realistic. It's not going to happen. And you know what makes me mad? It makes me mad because I have to now defend big oil. Like never in my life did I think the Biden administration would put me in a position where I have to defend big oil. But here we are today. Well, you know, I think any any free market conservative, we're going to run out of time here, would have said the right way to do this is let the market add to supply of energy. That's oil, that's oil, natural gas, that's wind, that's solar, that's renewables, that's the biodiesel stuff. But they said, no, we have to cut this off and then hope this stuff comes online. And there's going to be a decade of pain that the voter, I don't think, is going to support unless the government seems to think that if they could just make it so miserable where the only avenue to getting price relief is for government to subsidize or to make a purchase from a foreign producer i don't know but they did this they're not taking responsibility for it and there's no end in sight i got